Hi guys, Marks here, Everything Ten Ray, and today we're gonna do a full Rally Raid open cartridge install video. So you will find all the details, links, and such below in the description box and uh, timestamps as well for the different parts of the installation. So if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can jump to the different different uh, parts of the installation, so to speak. So please like and subscribe. If you want to donate, you have a donate button underneath as well. And uh, let's get started. We're gonna start off by just looking at some pictures with the needed tools that you require to do this installation. And I will talk you through them as well when we go ahead and do the install. So let's do that. So in the box you get one compression cartridge and cap and one reborn cartridge and cap. Uh, you get two springs uh, of your selection. Uh, you get the plastic spring guides which are already installed. One liter of Motorex 5W low friction racing fork oil. Uh, plastic pre preload spacers. It's four or five millimeter spaces and two, two millimeter spaces. Uh, cap removal tool and preload wrench and uh, one o-ring that you put over one of the legs for easier uh, sag adjustments there's a list of tools that are needed you need a 14 millimeter hex socket uh, you need the rally raid om cartridge removal tool if you do not have an impact uh, driver it uh, might be needed anyways. Uh, you need a 43 millimeter fork seal driver, a torque wrench, air gap tool, and measuring cup for the oil. That's pretty much what you need. Then it's always good to maybe have a heat gun and some other bits and bobs, but you can see that in the video later on when I explain it all. Here's just a list of uh, different torques that uh, you use when you mount everything or put everything together so good to have as a reference point so to start off we need to uh, you know remove the front fork legs and you can do it one side at a time or remove both at both at the same time uh, but remove the front tire the the brake calipers the fairings uh, for the front fender so you can free up the leg so i'm gonna do that now and then when we before we remove the leg, we're gonna go and check on one little small thing that is good to do before you remove it from the clamp or the triple clamp. So now we removed everything for, for the left leg and uh, the ABS sensor, the caliper, everything that is uh, screwed or bolted to the left leg. And before we loosen the clamps, the top one and the bottom one, we want to unscrew this cap first off just loosen it a bit because it's easier when it's clamped to the bike than when you have it free out of the bike so to do that we just loosen the top uh, clamp bolts and then we can use a 19 socket or a 19 wrench and just uh, loosen that up so i will do that now and then remove the leg from the bike itself so now the left leg is out so this will be our compression leg when we put in the cartridge kit. And before we start uh, disassembling the left leg, we will clean it off. We don't want to introduce any dirt or anything when we install the cartridge kit, so we will clean it off. We will also remove the little rubber protector that sits in here at the compression adjustment. So the, the top cap, that's where you have the rebound adjustment. I also, before removing the leg, I marked with a magic marker uh, the position it was in the triple uh, just to make it easy for me when I put it back. So now we will clean this off and then we will start removing uh, the old parts. So everything is cleaned up uh, and I will just remove the, the top cap with the 19s and as I loosen it up before when it was on the bike it's much easier to get it off. So we just slide it down the tube and uh, we expose the spring, the spring guide and everything. So now before I empty this out from of oil, all the old oil, I will actually remove the spring because it will be much less oily everywhere if I remove it first. So by, to do that you need a 17th 
and the 19th so I just put this in here and then you have a nut underneath here in the spring so we'll just find that one and then unscrew it it's already loose so we'll just jam it in there sometimes you need to move the the spring a bit to access it and you will not have a lot of tension on the spring it will be some slight te tension but it, nothing will go flying around there we go so we have the the cap and the spring guide the metal washer in the top we will remove the spring and it will be oily so it's good if you have a container or something to put it in just to get all the oil dripping out and now i will just empty this out in a container let it drain out for a bit and then i will start to disassemble all the cartridge itself so now we empty it out of oil and now we will uh, disassemble the leg from the chrome part and the, uh, the golden tube here so to do that we need to remove the dust cap behind that we have a retaining clip and then we have the oil seal and a washer to do that we need to first peel off or open up and remove the dust cap if you have a knife you can do that otherwise a flat screwdriver you can get it in between here just be careful so you don't scratch the cr uh, chrome part of the this can sit snugly and if you have a heat gun it's you can put some heat on this and the oil seal uh, will come out easier when you pull it apart the clip you find in here and we you will just use a flat screwdriver to loosen it or get it unclipped so to say might be hard to see but you will see it when everything is loose how it should sit and how it looks so here's the retaining clip and uh, now we just have the the oil seal and I can see that the oil seal spring has come loose from it position or where it should be seated but that doesn't bother me now because I will pull it apart and to do this you will need to use force and pull the leg this way all the way until it stops and it should come off it's not necessary you need to have it in the vise you can hold it and just pull it so I will just pull this all the way there you go and it's off so now you have the two legs uh, disassembled from each other here you can see that spring that had got loose from the oil seal the oil seal sits here you have a washer which have the flat part of the washer towards let's see the oil seal and then you have a inner bushing and an outer bushing here on on the the chrome leg itself so we will go through that and you will see what i mean when i talk about wear patterns or you can see if it's wear, worn down but first of all we're going to remove this from the fork itself so we're going to go ahead and do that so first we will re remove the outer bushing and you will see it has a black surface and you can remove it by just put your nails in there and pry it apart a bit don't pry it too far be careful and as this is a new bike we will actually reuse these and you can look at this black coating which is a, like a teflon coating if you have any scratches or it looks bad then you need to re replace it so before you install your cartridge uh, put in new bushings if that is needed in our case i think we only would need to put in new oil seals or i highly recommend that you get the oil seals from rally raid when you order your cartridge so you have fresh and new oil seals and you can save the oil seals that sit in your fork right now to have spares so the inner bushing we just slide that off we look on the inside for any wear pattern or damages everything looks nice i put it here on the table in the same order i remove them then we have the washer and it has the flat surface uh, inwards or towards the the bushings and the 
a little convex side towards the oil seal. And then we have the oil seal itself. And now as this is already damaged, I, I don't mind, you know, messing it up. Uh, otherwise I will show you guys a trick how you get it off before uh, without damaging it. So this part where the outer bushing sits, it has really, really sharp corners. So if you have some parchment paper, wrap that around. When you pull it off, wrap it around just inside that that uh, that's a placement or seat for the for the bushing. And you can oil this paper before because then it gets stuck to the chrome tube. And we have the lock. And then we have the dust seal. And now of course it will not come off. The most important thing is when you put in the new seals that you use parchment paper or a seal bullet, which you pull, put over the leg here so you can get it off or get it on, install it on without damaging, damaging the new seals. So the next step now is to remove the cartridge, the OEM cartridge from, from the, the chrome or the tube itself. And to do that, you will need to remove the spring guide. You have a nut here. Usually it's not that hard to remove. In this case, it's actually torqued down. And it's a 17th. There we go. Remove the nut. Dirty rag, it doesn't it's not right now because you don't replace it. Remove that from it. And you can see that the, the spring guide has two different surface, uh, surfaces or the, the fitment is different. It's a bit longer here than on the other side. So the longer part should be downwards in the leg. So if you put this back, it should be downwards. And now come the tricky part because if you uh, want to remove this, the cartridge itself is not keyed or locked in place down in the leg. So if you, uh, unscrew the bottom plug here where you have the, the compression adjuster you're gonna use a 14 hex head and if you start undoing that the whole cartridge itself will start turning inside the leg so you will never get it out and to get that out then you either use an impact wrench when you start unscrewing it or undoing it or you get the rally ray tool which looks like this so this tool has teeth that will mount with the cartridge on the inside and you can use this as leverage when you unscrew the cartridge itself. So I will just get that in place. There, now it's in place. You can put a screwdriver through here. And of course you can you can remove the cartridge without removing the outer tube if you want, but in this case, you know, we're gonna put new stuff on it, so we will do everything, you know, pull it out now without the outer tube. And of course, doing this is always best to be two persons, so one can hold on to this side. Yeah, come on, hold on, not that. Now I will take my torque wrench. See that I go in reverse and then so now it should be loose and the cartridge itself or the the compression adjuster the valve down here sits with a o-ring so it could be really hard to get that one out in case you have a hard time getting it out you could use a plastic rod or something to push down on the bolt so you get it out from the bottom side. So here you can see the cartridge, the OEM cartridge, which is a 20 millimeter cartridge. The rally raid one is a 35, so it's significantly larger. So you have more oil flowing through the cartridge itself when the, the suspension is working. And yeah, now we got rid of this one. Next step will be to remove the bottom comp adjuster, clean out the, the tube itself so it's clean from old oil, and then we will start assembling the new one. 
So now everything is cleaned. Uh, I actually put some fork oil in the cap for the for the oil that comes with the kit, the Motorex fork oil, 5W. And we also got the fork seal kit, the SKF fork seal kit from Rally Raid. And in this kit, you have a dust cap or dust seal, you have a spacer and you have the oil seal, of course. And this spacer, you should throw in the trash. You don't need the spacer for the Yamaha T7 fork. Uh, you only need the oil seal and the dust cap. So the dust cap comes on first. And before we put that on, I will put some oil over the chrome part of the leg and also on all the parts so they slide easier. And then I will use the parchment paper when installing these on the leg. So we don't get caught up on the sharp edges and destroy these new fresh uh, oil seal and dust cap. So we got the dust cap on here and when you pull it over, pull the whole paper with, with the dust seal. This is the sharp edge and you don't wanna mess it up. And uh, it's easy to pull over with the whole uh, parchment paper when the seal is brand new they are really tight make sure you do not damage the springs the springs can come off when you play around with it but uh, it's easily put together so we got the oil seal after the oil seal we got the uh, the locking clip or retaining clip after that we go ahead with the uh, with the with the oil seal and you can see it's shaped differently so this is the inside that's inwards in the leg this is pointing down towards the dust cap and the retaining clip and if you have a, a seal bullet or something like that it's much easier uh, you can also go with you know a plastic bag or something like that it's actually sometimes easier than doing it with parchment paper so this one came on really easily and there we go after that we have our our C uh, I mean our washer with the the sharp edge or I mean the flat edge upwards toward the bushings we put on the, this, the washer then we take our inner bushing thread that or put that over it's also oil and then we take our outer busher bushing that will lock everything in place pry that open and then slide it over it will lock in place and nothing will come over that one so now we got uh, our seals and everything uh, put on the leg itself. Now we will put everything together. And to do that, you would need a seal driver. This is an oil seal driver uh, for a 43 millimeter uh, forks. And we will use that to put, push these in and seat them in the outer tube. So we take our cleaned outer tube, we push that over the leg, then we can put in the, the inner bushing with, this, with the uh, washer. And this one we need to drive in place using the fork seal driver. We install this one onto the chrome tube. And with a force, you drive this together and now you could hear a different noise or different sound that now we know that the, the inner, sea, uh, inner bushing is uh, seated in its position. Now we will do the same thing with the oil seal. So we'll just change this, change this around. We 
put in the oil seal install our driver it's in there you can also feel a difference in in how it feels when you smash the driver into the oil seal as well the only thing we have left now is to lock the seal in place with the with the clip and it's very easily done if you just pull push this in one side in and follow up with the rest you can hear it click in place you take a flat head screwdriver make sure it's seated everything looks nice make sure it's in the groove in there very nicely seated and then we just put our dust seal on and that's all the seals done now we will install the rally raid cartridge and you will see how that goes so now it's now it's time to install the cartridge and here's the, the rally raid open cartridge kits a 35 millimeter piston or cartridge itself uh, before you do this you will need to remove this bolt in the bottom and uh, as the this open cartridge kit has a compression leg and a rebound leg so you don't ha have any any adjustment in the bottom bolt it's just a bolt that holds the the cartridge in place in the leg and we also have uh, some added preload spacers that you don't need to use but depending on how much preload you need you need to add spacer afterwards otherwise you have built-in preload in the cap itself and uh, sometimes that's enough but if it's not enough then you have a, a five millimeter and two two millimeter spacers that you can add to each leg you need to have the same amount of spacers in each leg when you add preload you also have a spacer down here this is just a seat for the spring so this one should not be removed so we will start off by just uh, putting this in the cartridge, I mean in the, in the leg, and then we will start uh, putting oil in and purge it from air. So I started off removing the top cap using the rally ray tool and a 17 millimeter wrench. And I did this because I want to remove uh, these spacers for preload because I'm not sure we need them. Then I will put back the cap and you don't need to tighten everything down now just do it by hand because we will uh, actually fill up oil without the spring installed and uh, yeah see see to it that we have the correct amount of oil in the cartridge itself so I installed the cartridge in the leg itself. I just hand tightened the cap. Make sure that all the adjustments are put to zero, so fully open. So you have the, the adjuster here with the Allen key. Uh, we will put that to zero, so all the way to the left counterclockwise. And when that is done, we will start putting oil in the leg itself. And it's 450 milliliters of oil per leg so you get a 900 milliliter bottle of Motorex oil so the cartridge is in I put it in a vise I will put push up the outer tube so I can see the threaded area of the cartridge inside I measured up 450 milliliter oil oil 450 milliliters I will pour this in when the leg or the outer tube is pushed up so I pour it into the cartridge and I pour until it come to the the top because you will fill it up and when done so I will put my hand over here so I will create a vacuum and I will work the the tube up and down and you can actually hear it gurgle when you get more oil in here 
if you do it without putting your hand over top you can you can get oil in your face when looking down into it so i fill will fill up as much as i can from from the bottom of the leg as i'm doing right now when that is done if i have oil left then we will go to the next step and turn the leg around and uh, put the the bolt in here in the bottom we will talk about that as well i will take the bolt with a copper uh, washer it has an o-ring put some oil on the o-ring and a tad bit of loctite on the the bolt itself hand tighten this down we will torque this to specs afterwards so now we filled it as much as we like or we cannot get much more in here we still have some left from that 450 so the rest will be filled from the other side so now i just put some thread lock uh, some loctite on the nut and everything is clean here we will get uh, the correct socket somewhere this is 18 this is not correct oh. 17 millimeter socket and now we will just hand tight this So no crazy to work on this one, just hand tighten it and then we will torque it later because you might need your impact wrench driver to torque this to specs because the, the cartridge itself can turn around inside the leg. And now we will turn it around, we will remove the, the top cap and we will check the air gap. So now we turn the leg around, we remove the, the, the cap, we will push the leg all the way up and uh, you would uh, need something underneath here because I don't have anything to hold it in place. And also to bleed out the system you pull the, 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 the rod up and down and you can also slightly push down on this adjuster, this is for the compression valve. Uh, to release any pressure there. And then you will use this air gap tool, which you will put down, down here. And when you have the inner tube and outer tube meeting together, you can just pull on this one. And if you get oil out, then you have too much oil and you will just keep on sucking it out until you don't get any oil out and then you will have the correct air gap which is 120 millimeters so air gap is 120 and uh, we will actually pull in the rest of the oil here because we did not get any oil out and then we will work the piston up and down to bleed all the air out and uh, then recheck the air gap so now we worked the the rod up and down a lot we don't hear, hear any more gurgles or any air bubbling, so it's probably okay. Now we will see how much oil we have in here. And you could hear it gurgled a little bit. We will try again. And I think we actually have ex exactly the correct amount of oil, which was 450 so it should be fine if I, if you're uncertain then you take a little bit more oil and suck that out and uh, you will be at the exact point so you are not below so now we were happy with the amount of oil in the leg everything was perfect at 120 millimeter air gap i put the the spring in and you can see that it's hard to get the piston up now but there is a trick to it uh, on the piston you will find a hole somewhere there you take a matching screwdriver you put that in the hole there we go and then you can just work your way upwards so to say 
can you reach the top and you can actually start threading on that, that the cap itself. Make sure that the top uh, knot here on the for the spring guide is is tightened. It's actually easier if you just uh, use the uh, Allen key or, or something like that to hold the the spring in place. See, I'm reaching the part, and it's a lot of tension on here now. I take my cap. We decided to first off not have any preload spacers installed as we have, I think 11 millimeter or 12 millimeter of preload in the cap itself. And now we will just tighten down the, the cap onto the piston. Then we will take our 17 millimeter wrench reach in on the the bolt between the spring and then we will tighten the the cap solid and it should be hunky dory now we just pull up the outer leg and we thread this on and you don't need to tighten the top cap like crazy you hand tighten it uh, it does not to be sitting like crazy hard and now i have oil everywhere so it's hard for me to tighten it but we'll solve that so now we put everything together uh, you will need to test the leg as well. You work the suspension up and down, then you can also check with the clicker that you get more feel, or you can feel that compression adjustments is working. But right now we're gonna tighten up the bottom bolt. Uh, first, I will use the impact driver to just tighten up, and then I will take a torque driver and uh, torque it to 40 Newton, 40 Newton meters, so four zero. So now we put everything back together. Uh, I could skip the mounting uh, procedure for putting the fork legs in again. It's simple. Just make sure that you uh, tighten the lower clamps and then tighten the cap and then tighten the upper clamps. Now we have everything set to zero. We first off check the sag, which is spot on right now. So we don't need to add any preload. Now we will just play around a little with the clickers and this is something that that has to be done after some riding as well because you need to ride in the fork so to say uh, so everything is smoothy and works as it should uh, but we will have to try out the compression clickers rebound felt uh, really okay and nice so everything is hunky-dory so far and uh, we will just do more adjustments well guys that's it for the installation or the full installation video and uh, for sure there's much more to cover and to you know add to this but i cannot make a video that is like 15 minutes long so what's missing is just how to tweak and adjust the suspension i'll probably make a separate video for this uh, regarding sag compression and rebound settings for the open cartridge uh, but it's also very, very personal. So even if my settings are for me perfect and I love them, another person might think they suck, right? So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoy this. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, just write it down below and I'll answer them quickly or make uh, a new video replying to the different questions depending on how many I get. So. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and stay safe, take care and have an awesome time. Cheerios. Bye bye.